loves me? She loves me not. She loves me? She loves me not. She loves me? She loves me not. She loves me? What are you doing? Talking to yourself? No. Now you got me all mixed up. I lost count. I don't know what the last feathers are. Now the feathers are talking back to you. Oh, no. I'm talking to the feathers. I mean, yeah. the feathers are talking to me. How do you say that? Now you got me. I'm all mixed up. Good. Oh, sure. I'm going out and see if there's any mail first. Just a minute. What? If there happens to be a blue letter out there, that's it. That's mine. Who's yours? I can start counting these things. Mine. Mine. Maxine, why, well, you're good for sore eyes. Oh. I haven't seen you in a dog's age. Yeah. It's been four or five years. That's right. Ever since we played back in St. Louis. Uh -huh. My good. How is George? Oh, he's fine. But I haven't seen him in over six months. You haven't seen your husband in six months? <laughs> it's not as bad as it sounds. He's in England. He's doing a play in London. I had hoped to join him, but uh, I've been waiting for a part here. Well, that's the theater. No home life. Say, are you living in this building? Yeah, right over here. Oh, I just moved in upstairs. Number 22. Why don't you come up and see me, huh? We'll talk about old times. I certainly will. Oh, that's good. Well, I've got to run along. I've got some shopping to do. Good. See you later, See you later, honey. Loves me? She loves me not. <laughs> oh, a mess you can make out of. She loves me, she loves me not, she loves me. She... Ooh, smells as though it's got a dose of chlorophyll. That's the letter. Edna. What? She's a chocolate tipper. Edna? Who is this Edna? That's the girl I'm gonna marry. Oh, she's got a cameo face. Huh? Beautiful sparkling eyes, Roman nose, pearly white teeth, and a swan-like neck. Oh, that's ridiculous. Is that so? She says so right here in a letter. You mean you've never seen this girl? Not yet, I haven't. I read her ad in the Lonely Hearts column. Beautiful, too. Get this. Beautiful young lady wishes to meet mature gentleman. Mature. What does mature mean? It means right. <laughs> Without encumbrance. She uses big words. Edna must be real smart. What's encumbrance? Encumbrance. That's a lien on a piece of property. Oh, see what she means now. Yeah. Beautiful young lady wishes to meet right gentleman, not too lean. That's, me. That's, that's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard of. You wanting to marry a woman that you've never seen. How do you know what she looks like? She may be some, some ugly... Oh, oh hold it, hold it right there. Uh, I'm going to write to Edna. I'm going to tell her everything that you've said. No, you don't. Never put your own handwriting on a piece of paper to a strange woman. Proceed. Thank you. My dear darling, Honey Puss Edna. I can hardly wait for you to arrive so we can be married and be man and wife. I dream about you every night. I would like to dream about you also in the daytime, but it's a little tougher. My darling, Honey Puss, I dream about your lovely blonde, fluffy hair which you mentioned in the ad. <laughs> I am going to send you $35, so you may take a big bus here, hoping you are the same, your little sucker, Lollipop Blue. <laughs> Would you like me to read this back to you? Yes, ma'am. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. Uh, pardon me just a minute, please. My dear darling, honey puss, Ed, what's the matter? You blowing your top? Now, wait a minute, bud. You shouldn't read that. Just a minute. I'll take care of that money. Give me back my $35. What? Now, have you get in trouble with it? I've been in trouble ever since I met you. You shouldn't read other people's mail. What's wrong That's with you? That's supposed to be private. That's a big thing in my life. I'm emotional. You're impossible. <laughs> Give me back my $35. I'll give you a punch in the nose. Ah, oh, stop that silly talk. Give me my $35. No! Are you going to give me my $35? No! I think he means it. He'll give it to me. He says no twice. Good afternoon, my young friend. Uh, can I show you something? 
I told you about that car. Well, well, I can see that you're a man of rare perception and discrimination. I am. Yes, you certainly are. That, my friend, is a very fine motor car. I want to look at the car to the gracefulness of its beautiful life. It's a beautiful looking thing. Ah, oh, beautiful. It's scarcely the word for it. Why, why, its sheer loveliness and even surpassed by, by, by its powerful motor. Perfect in every detail. <laughs> How about thirty-five dollars? Thirty-five dollars. Of course, you must be joking. Why, that car, my friend, is worth four hundred ninety-five dollars. If it's worth a dime. Four hundred ninety-five dollars. Yes, every nickel of it. I'll take it. <laughs> and you won't be sorry. Uh, can you give me the money in cash? Why, certainly. What was that? Can you give me the four hundred ninety-five dollars in cash for my car? I think there's a slight misunderstanding. That is your car. Oh yes, and I have the bill here right here to prove it. Four hundred ninety-five dollars for that? For that ancient pile of junk? You must be insane, man. That isn't worth ten dollars. It isn't even worth the labor to wreck it. Well, look at those tires. Why, a sharp rock would go through any one of them. Here, just uh, shake that up there. Hit this. Pick this up? Yeah, just, just hit that right there. <laughs> look at the fenders. Look. Let it go. Yeah, it's a bad tire, ain't it? That's all I tried to tell you. Look at the fenders. Why did it fall off? <laughs> Get out wrecking my car. Look at the doors. Look at the doors. Ten wax tiles. Let me show you something here. Hey, but the windshield is in good shape. Windshield, just as I thought. Single white glass. Look at that. <laughs> How do you like that? Now I Four hundred and ninety-five dollars. Why, well, that's ridiculous. It is. Look. How about thirty-five? Thirty-five. Well, it's not worth it, but uh, a deal's a deal. Okay, I'll sign over the bus deal. Thirty-five dollars. Uh, just a moment. Thirty-five dollars less uh, eight fifty for the uh, for the uh, fender. Wait a minute! I didn't do that. You did that with your foot, you clumsy man! Just right there with your foot, and broke it yourself. My dear friend, just a moment. Would you buy a car with a broken fender? Of course you wouldn't. And you wouldn't expect me to do something you wouldn't do, now would you? He's a happy dealer, isn't he? <laughs> Seven dollars for a brand new tire. Wholesale, I'll make that to you. Four dollars and seventy-five cents for repairing the door. The windshield will, uh, see, we'll make that twelve fifty. Now, I think that's about all. Can I get anything here for that uh, Albuquerque Indian blanket? I got the car, you can have that. No, I, 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 the sales tax will be two twenty extra. Two twenty extra. See, now that makes uh, thirty-four dollars and ninety-five cents. There you are, my friend, and believe me, I'm losing money on the deal. I even lost a nickel. Now I gotta stop looking for that. Hey, Mike, what's going on? This is a gambling raid. Stand aside. Stand wasn't one of those inside. He wasn't. No, no, he's too dumb to get mixed up in a thing like that. He's my little pal, Lou Costello. My gosh, we better call an ambulance. Well, he lives right down here. I'll take him home. Come on. Is he all right, Doc? It's nothing serious. Just a little bump on the head. Well, I wouldn't want anything to happen to that kid. Think the world of him. We squabbled quite a little bit, but it don't mean anything. Why, I'd do anything. Well, well, why don't you do something about him getting tangled up with that woman? That woman he's never even seen. Yeah, I think I will. He'll be all right as soon as he comes to. How long will that be? A couple hours, maybe. If there's anything you want me to do, you'll let me know, how about? Thanks, Maxie. Maxine, wait a minute. Maybe there is something you can do. 
I have an idea that we can break up that romance between Costello and that Edna dame. That is, if you'll go along with the gag. Why not? You know me. Anything for a gag. Uh, can we go up to your place to talk it over? Sure. Come on. Well. Edna? Oh, Edna. Edna, darling, you're beautiful. <laughs> Kiss me, Edna, honey push. <laughs> Time you woke up, you lazy bum. Wait a minute, lady. There must be something wrong around here. I'll say there is. It's you. Now, come on. Get up on your feet and start cleaning this apartment. And when you're through, I want it to shine. Do you understand? Shine. And when you're through, there's washing to do. No, 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 no. What do you want? Hello, Edna. Edna? Uh, I'd like to speak to this for a minute. Yeah, for a minute. But he's not getting out of this apartment. He's not associated with bums like you. Not while he's my husband. Okay, Edna. <laughs> hey, what? 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 What's this all about? Who's that woman? It's your wife, Edna. <laughs> my, 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 my wife? You know I'm not married. Well, Lou, don't you remember sending for Edna and marrying her? Oh, no. All I remember is the cop hit me on top of the head and I wake up here in this apartment with a strange woman and now you tell me I'm married. But that, that happened over three months ago. Three months ago? Three months ago since the cop hit you over the head. Don't you remember anything since he hit you? No. Nothing at all? No. Oh, boy, that's bad. That's terrible. That's a, You must have had amnesia. Amnesia? No, that, that's a temporary loss of memory. A lot of people get that when they get a clunk on the head like you got. You must have regained your memory when Edna threw you down the steps last night. Wait a minute, Abbott. You mean this woman here, Edna? She threw me down the steps last night? Yep. I'll see you later. I'm getting out of here. Don't try it, you miserable little worm. Or I'll wipe up the floor with you. And I believe she could do it, too. Well, I'm going down to get dressed every day tonight. Beautiful girl, dinner, theater. And by the way, she's got a gorgeous little roommate. Oh, I've got to get a date for her, too. How about me? Oh, you're all tied up. Get out of here, you no good rat. Now, just a minute. You can't call my pal a no good rat. No? No. I was gonna do it for you. Get out of here, you no good rat. Get out of here. Could I ask you something? Yeah. Why did you throw me down the steps last night? Because I had nothing better to do. Oh. Come on, now, get back to work. Just, just, ma'am. Come on. Come on, move fast. I don't want to get down the steps. Come on, move fast. Well, is he okay? Okay and miserable. Maxine even had me afraid of her. <laughs> Shut the door, you boy! Yes, Edna? Stella, what are you doing down here? Edna will skin you alive. Listen, a fine friend, a fine pal. We're supposed to be like brothers. So Why did you let me marry that female Simon Legree? You ought to be ashamed of yourself. I tried to talk you out of it, didn't I? I even took your money away from you so that you couldn't send it to Edna for a bus ticket. Didn't I do that? By the way, where yeah. is that $35? I gave it back to you. You did? <laughs> Certainly. There's that magnesia business again. Oh, you see? <laughs> what about that $100 I loaned you? Now, you know darn well I don't remember that. Ah, uh, you forget everything. Uh-oh, Edna. No, 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 not in there, sir. Look, out the window. Out the window. Hurry up. Where's my husband? Well, are you convinced? I'm convinced of my mistake in marrying that little shrimp. Well, there's nothing you can do about it now. Oh, yes, there is. I can either divorce him or shoot him. Maybe a divorce wouldn't be so messy. You gotta help me. My life has been threatened. Your life's been threatened? Yeah. Who threatened your life? My wife. Your what? My wife. Edna. I heard her with her own lips say she's gonna shoot me. 
Sure, sure. Now, don't you worry about a thing. Everything will be okay. Now, you just go on in and relax. Re -re relax? And wake up dead? Listen, I heard my wife had to say it with her own lips. She's going to shoot me and kill me. Sure, sure. Now, don't worry about a thing. I'll have a nice, long talk with her. Now, you just go in there and forget it. Just like the police force. I'm about to get murdered, and you say go in and forget it. <laughs> <laughs> you must have hit him harder than you thought. He's really off his rocker. He hasn't any wife. Okay, goodbye. Costello, your troubles are all over. You mean she's not going to shoot me? Now, wait a minute. Just take it easy. I've talked to Edna into divorcing you. Oh, good. And she's not going to shoot me. She's not going to shoot That's you. good news. Everything's going to be settled in court. That means i got to go for a lawyer. I've arranged for that, too. Sidney Fields, our landlord here, used to be an attorney, and he's going to handle your case for free. <laughs> now, look, we'll all meet here at 3 o'clock, and we'll discuss this whole matter. We're going to meet here at 3 o'clock? At 3 o'clock. Edna, the truck horse, she going to be here? Certainly. <laughs> Edna, she's not going to shoot you in cold blood. Hot or cold, blood is blood. I'm not going to fool around. Oh, cut in. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Good afternoon. This shouldn't take long. Won't you sit here, my dear? <laughs> Mr. Fields, huh? Just get a load of that woman. See the way she's dressed? Just because she thinks she's going to get alimony and a divorce from me. Come, come. Let's get down to business. Now, Costello, as your counsel, I don't want to waste any of your time. Nor the time of this charming young lady. <laughs> now, huh? Get right down to business. Now, Costello, what is your income? Nothing. What is your potential income? How much are you capable of earning? Nothing. Nothing? Oh, $50 a week, $75 a week? Are you kidding? When I work, you get $100 a week. Ah, $100 a week potential income. I should say $95 a week would be a fair alimony. Now, wait a minute, Mr. Fields. I can't live on $5 a week. How much did you say you were getting? Nothing. Well, then you have an increased income of $5 a week. <laughs> I think that settles it. Now we've got to determine the grounds for the divorce. Tell me, my dear, does your husband drink? No. How do you know he doesn't drink? Well, I've never seen him take a drink. Ah. The solitary drinker, a sneaky type, huh? <laughs> Which lawyer are you? I'm yours, of course. What are you talking like this for? Well, I'm helping out your case, my dear. Tell me, does your husband ever strike you? Are you kidding? Me? Strike this woman? Are you kidding? What about the time you were choking on that fishbone? Huh? He slapped you then, didn't he, on the back? Well, once I was choking on a fishbone, and he did hit me on the back. Did you tell him that you were choking? Yes, I did. You yeah. sure? Now, wait a minute, Mr. Fields, Mr. Rabbit. Well, let me you ask you something. her on the back. Of course, she was going... <laughs> Just a moment. Do you remember telling her, or did she tell you? Yeah, she went... <laughs> <laughs> you know about in advance? How could you know that she was choking? You know what this is? Your husband waited until you were incapacitated by a serious illness, and then he maliciously slugged you when you weren't looking. I did not! <laughs> <laughs> Were you drunk when you brutally slugged your wife? I was cold sober. Oh, you were cold sober, huh? That even makes the case worse. You slugged your wife while you were cold sober. That's brutal premeditation. I never did such a thing. I never... <laughs> One more thing. Has your husband any previous criminal record? No. Has he ever been arrested? Not that I know of. Wait a minute. Wait no. a minute. How about that gambling raid? Remember, you were connected with that. Just a moment. Concealing your association with underworld characters? No, no, Mr. Fields, look. You admit that you did frequent gambling establishments? Yeah. Illegal gambling establishments? Mr. Fields, I was walking down the street. I had a lousy nickel. I saw a jackpot machine on the... And when you put the nickel in on outside, where they were throwing out the gambling stuff, I put the nickel in there and I hit the jackpot. Then you did gamble? No, I did just hit the jackpot. You got a lot of money out of it. Out. Wait a minute. Did you report this winning in your income tax return? No, because I... We've got everything we need. I want you to look what we got on him. Habitual drunkenness, repeatedly striking his wife, frequenting gambling establishments, consorting with characters of the underworld, concealing his income, and concealing a criminal record. Oh, we'll see you in court, Costello. Don't you leave town, my dear. I'm going to get you away from these sordid surroundings. Come, I'll take you home. Uh, yes, indeed. That's my lawyer. Brady man. Give him a chance. This is his first case, you know. See you later. Where you going? I'm going up in that room and pack all my clothes. And I'm leaving here. I'm getting so far away from here, it'll cost you $14 to send me a postcard. Joe! Hiya, baby. Oh, why didn't you let me know? I wanted to surprise you. Oh, I'm so glad to see you. Baby, I'm taking you back with me. To London? That's right. And our plane leaves in a couple hours. You better step on it. Oh, that's wonderful. 
<laughs> just a minute. How dare you? As soon as my back is turned, you start smooching with another guy. Hey, what's with this little guy? Who is he anyway? Listen, you leave go of that material of that coat. I'm not a husband. That's who I am. Leave go of that coat. I'll punch you right in the nose. What's with this little shrimp? Is he nuts or something? Well, sort of. I better explain. We haven't got time. You better pack a bag. We gotta catch a plane. Explain later. Just a minute. You'll do the explaining right now. I think I will. <laughs> Sometimes you'd really love it. Okay? I'm gonna miss you. <laughs> Just to see the family, you'd love it. Okay? I certainly would. Uh, you got a match? I certainly will. Under yours? Uh, oh yes, yes. Uh, pardon me. Uh, this is my partner Lou. Lou, meet George. There's no pal. Hiya, Lou. How are you, Lou? Yes, indeedy. By George, I knew. Under the same roof. Who'd ever expect to see you? I didn't know you lived in this house. How are oh, you? Oh sure, we've been here for years and years. You know? <laughs> How do you feel, son? I feel terrible. Uh, here's some coffee. It'll fix you up. Thank you. <laughs> he just woke up. I'm sorry I was so rough on your little friend, bud. Oh, that's all right. It possibly taught him a good lesson. Well, I see you're all set, ready to go. That's right. We'll drop you a card. Will you do that? Yeah. Swell. So long, bud. So long. Goodbye, bud. Have a good time. Right. Who was it? Uh, oh, just some friends of mine. Good. I was scared for a minute. I thought it was Edna. Edna? Yeah. Who's Edna? Edna, my wife. Uh, your wife? What's the matter with you, boy? You know who's not married. The girl you married? Edna, yeah. Well, ever since you got clunked by that cop this morning, you've been acting uh, funny. Now, listen, it was three months ago that I got sucked in the head by that cop. That's just when I married Edna. Didn't I? Certainly not. You've been asleep on that couch ever since you got caught in that gambling raid this morning. Uh, you've been dreaming. Dreaming? Yeah. What a horrible dream. Three giants have been chasing me all over these corridors out there. Wait, I just saw. Go on over, lie down, and relax. Anything I can do for you? Yes. Give me back my $35. <laughs> Thank you. 